Good evening to all of you, and it's uh, my pleasure to invite uh, and to uh, host Alexander Krinico, Professor Alexander Krinico, from Italy for this uh, webinar, specially designed for ankle and foot disorders. So, Professor Krinico is having 30 years of experience in ankle and foot, and uh, it would be fun and learning experience for us to have his inputs on this disorder. This webinar is uh, hosted by MP chapter and uh, we have our uh, executive uh, who is also going to Dr. Prashant who is also going to speak and Dr. Saurabh, they are going to share their cases and now I hand over to Shamsul for the formal inauguration and introduction. Uh, thank you sir for a wonderful introduction. So, good evening, friends. I welcome you all for today's uh, next series of uh, Assam India webinar master class. Today, we have stalwarts. We have a uh, renowned professor, uh, Alexander Krenko, as uh, Dr. Janessar Sheikh first. He is a senior consultant at uh, uh, Institute. I will give an introduction. And as we all know, he's author of the famous book of Elizabeth Technique for Complex Foot and Ankle Deformities. We have read his books multiple times and learned from him. Um, he was born in uh, Rajasthan, Russia in March 28, 1959. And his medical surgeon specialist in orthopedics and trauma. He's been living in Italy since 12 December 92. This is address and email. <laughs> regarding his... Uh, uh, please mutes. Maharshi, please mutes others. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, regarding his education, uh, he has taken his medical uh, degree at University of uh, Blago, Vasensk, Russia, in 1982. He has then specialized in trauma and orthopedics from 83 to 85, has attended the city University of Kurgan, the course of studies in patent legislation. Then from uh, 92 to 93, he studied at the University of Degli Studio of Milano, achieving a degree in surgery and medicine. And on 92, with the thesis, the treatment of pseudo-orthosis, please mute this, of the forearm with the Elizabeth method. And I see he has been certified by University Deglu study of Milan as an orthopedic surgeon. Regarding his past working experience, from 81 to 82, he has worked in the regional hospital of Blagoshensk, Russia as a nurse. From 82 to 87, he worked as a surgeon in the Department of Pathology of Hand and Foot. In the Orthopedic and Traumatologic Center of Professor Elizabeth Kurgan, Russia. Mm -hmm. From 82 to 92, as a senior researcher in the Orthopedics and Traumatology Center from 88 to 92, he's worked as head of the Department of Division Pathology of Hand and Foot in the Orthopedic and Traumatologic uh, Center of Professor uh, Elizabeth Kurgan, in Russia. Mm -hmm. Regarding his current occupation, he has been working uh, since 88 as a private consultant. At the San Rafael Hospital, where he started working as surgeon in 92. Since 2002, he has a senior consultant at the Orthopedic Institute Galeazzi, both studied at Milan, Italy, senior consultant at uh, Villa Start Orthopedic Clinic, Rome. Since 2001, he has been in uh, charge of the Division of External Fixation of Bone and Lindening at the Humanitarian Research Institute, Rosa Milan, Italy. He is working still there. He is a member of uh, international orthopedic associations like AAAS, uh, American LLRS, EPOS, and CIOR. Dr. Kirenko has lectured at many orthopedic congresses worldwide and has published extensively on the Elizabeth method of external circular fixation. And last publications in uh, 94, he published the book Karagni with Karagni M.A. Melazo, Kirenko Advances in Elizabeth Apparatus Assembly. Uh, last edition in uh, 2008. In 2004, is published the book uh, A. Kirenko Avila, the Elizabeth Technique for Complex Food and Active Deformity, that is a famous book we have read multiple times. This in-depth exploration of the Elizabeth method uh, offers step-by-step -step coverage of the wide array of application utilizing Elizabeth techniques for corrections of deformities, including club foot and equinus, as well as defects from muscular dystrophy, trauma, bonds, and complications of previous surgery. These are the number of his numerous, uh, numerous uh, publications. It will take long time, so we cannot count this. And uh, we have learned the foot and ankle course at uh, Kurgan from Trigankyo, sir. For now, I request Trigankyo, sir, to start this public talk. Thank you, sir. What you, sir? Okay. I go. 
Okay, now I share my screen. One second. Yes, sir. Please do. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, greetings from Italy. Greetings, sir. Greetings to all of you, or Sami India. It's really my pleasure to be with you this evening to share my experience with all of you. And um, my presentation will be dedicated to types and planar of the photostotomies. The uh, Elizarov invented many kinds of osteotomy, like you see in this diapositivo, uh, osteotomy of calcaneus, osteotomy midfoot, uh, VOI osteotomy, and the combination of these osteotomies. We start to uh, see how we correct the deformity of different parts of the foot. Calcaneus deformity. Calcaneus may be deformed in two planes, a sagittal plane, it may be horizontal heel or calcaneus and equinus, in deformity, maybe in the frontal, frontal plane, like a varus hill or valgus hill. Before doing the, our consideration, we should see the axis of the calcaneus. You see this uh, model of the bone, and this is a uh, right side presentation, that the axis of the tibia and the uh, weight bearing point of the calcaneus is overlapping, but uh, radiologically, the axis of calcaneus is not the same. Axis of calcaneus is lateral. If you look at uh, this uh, presentation of the right part of your screen, you see that radiological axis is 18 millimeters uh, on external. But when we see the axis of the tibia and we see now on the anatomical cuts of the, uh, the foot, you realize that slowly, slowly, we go down on the cuts of the calcaneus. The more you arrive, you see that the uh, oh, weight buried point, the, the weight we weight buried, and we touch this, uh, the sole, that the axis of the tibia completely overlapping of the axis of the tibia. For this reason, we need always realign the weight buried point with the axis of the tibia. How we do the correction? We talk about varus. Varus deformity, usually it is a a little bit displacement in this axis of the calcaneus inclined. We need to put the hinges for correction and the border of the talus, a lateral border. We put the hinges at this point. We do destruction and correction with a little bit of translation of calcaneus. This is how the frame looks for the correction. Two rings of the tibia, one half ring inclined it like the inclined the calcaneus. If you need to do lengthening of the calcaneus because it's a uh, heel is not so high, the hinges may be positioned more laterally. In this way, we achieve lengthening and a little bit of translation of calcaneus. If you don't need to, to do lengthening, we put the hinges in the central part of the talus. In this way, we do correction, a slight translation of the calcaneus laterally. Uh, opposite situation, valgus deformity of the calcaneus, we put the hinges in the medial border of the talus. The rings, half ring, calcaneo half ring, inclined in perpendicular of the axis of the calcaneus. We do correction on this axis. We do uh, lengthening, triangular shape regenerate, and translation. If you need to do lengthening of calcaneus, the hinges should be positioned much more medially, and we do destruction on the lateral road. At the end of the correction, of the varus or valgus, or um, it may be necessary to do correction of abduction and adduction. And this uh, frame permits us to do this movement. It's like a rotation of device. It permits to correct the calcaneal deformity. This is how it looks from in the front of you. Correction of the equinus of the calcaneus. We do osteotomy of the calcaneus. The hinge should be positioned in the plantar border of osteotomy. We do progressive correction with posterior road. We achieve triangle shape regenerate proximal, and we do correction. There is no oh, difference of so the line of osteotomy that we do for calcaneus. Maybe a little bit more uh, vertical or a little bit more horizontal. But like you see, two different osteotomy, but the re uh, result, clinical and radiological, quite absolutely the same. 
correction of vertical calcaneus, uh, like you see, the same type of osteotomy, longitudinal uh, rectilinear osteotomy, but the hinge in this situation should be positioned more proximal and then the proximal end of the uh, calcaneal osteotomy. And we do compression of posterior rod, like uh, you see in this scheme of the frame. Frame is a uh, have a hinge and the, uh, the level of the proximal part of osteotomy and we do compression of the posterior rod of the calcaneus in the destruction of two plantar rods between the calcaneus half ring and anterior half ring. And this is how it looks at the end of the correction. If you need to do lengthening of the calcaneus, we may uh, put this uh, three horizontal rod like a translational device and we do com compression of these rods. In this way, we display the posterior half ring and we do lengthening posteriorly. We need to do destruction of the two plantar rod between the cal uh, calcaneal half ring and anterior half ring. For uh, precise uh, programming and uh, planning of the deformity correction, and with the idea of Salome, we published this job that permits to do precise uh, programming of the correction of deformity. It's based on the anatomical axis and mechanical axis of the first metatarsals. It's based on the axis of the calcaneus and it's based on the uh, quadrilateral foot. This is published. I explained it better because of the, this is a scheme of correction of the calcaneus deformity. There is the design by I show you step by step. Principal uh, key point, it is a talus joint line. What does it mean? This talus joint line, that is a point posterior border of the, of the ankle joint, anterior border of, of the uh, ankle joint of the talus. And this line, it is line, we call it AB. If we take it uh, this amount, like one, like a reference point line, it's different patient, have a different amount, but it is uh, for this pay, uh, foot, it will be like uh, amount one. After that, what we do, we continue this line, we design the light A, A, C. In this uh, sector, anterior sector B, C, it is a 2.56 more than the amount one of uh, segment of talus joint line. After that, we design the exit of the calcaneus and the, this green line, this uh, cross at the point C. And the angle between this line and the normal foot, because it was studied 60 patient, normal uh, foot. And the, in, these two lines cross into the 50 degrees between them, 15 degrees. And I'm out of the point CD, it is uh, uh, the line that uh, between crossing the first line of the joint and the line of the calcaneus. In this segment CD, it is 4.59 amount more than the amount of AB. How we do this uh, programming for the pathological foot? You see, this is uh, maybe a fracture of the calcaneus it was, calcaneus now in the in equinus. We design point AB. After that, we designed the line, continue this line. We found point C because you remember the point C is uh, found in the segment BC. It is a 2.56 more than AB. After that, what we do, we design the line uh, or uh, ideal line of the calcaneus in the angle 15 degrees. And we designed the Pathological axis of calcaneus because for calcaneus was fractured. Now this is a pathological line. And we found the deformities uh, in this point. This uh, line designed as the deformity line. We do osteotomy and we do correction of the axis of the calcaneus. In this, now axis is normal of the calcaneus, but we need to calculate again the amount of lengthening of calcaneus should be done. Remember that the uh, sector uh, CD is bigger than sector AB in 4.59 uh, more than the, the first one. What we do, we calculate this amount and at the end we display the calcaneus and we achieve this length of calcaneus. Now the calcaneus in their good axis and the good amount of uh, lengthening we achieve. 
some clinical example is this uh, pathological fracture of calcaneus. This is like a defect of calcaneus. You see in the short calcaneus, CT scan before, during surgery, we put two rings of sodomy of the calcaneus. We put wires on the calcaneus, half ring for progressive correction. And the lengthening of calcaneus distally, this is a clinical view at the end of the correction, and this is a radiological view at the end of the correction and after removing the frame. And this is different before and after correction of the calcaneus and clinical view of the foot after correction. Okay, this is amount of movement of the ankle joint is not suffer here. Midfoot deformity correction. Midfoot may be deformed in two, three planes. In the horizontal plane, that is abduction or adduction of the forefoot. Sagittal plane of the midfoot, it is like a cavus. Because the cavus may be anterior cavus when we talk about only the forefoot deformity, like equinus of the forefoot. Mixed cavus emits that maybe deformity of the forefoot and the and the calcaneus, like a vertical calcaneus. And the cavus may be accompanied with equinus because if the talus is in equinus position, altogether there's cavus, but with a kind of deformity. And deformity in the frontal plane at the forefoot may be in supination and pronation. How we do the correction of abduction or abduction? This is a classical work of study of the axis of the forefoot, many axes, but we design it a little bit easier. It's a more principal uh, axis we need to respect. And how we program this? We designed the, the medial shopper joint line. This is AV, and we, we calculate the axis and the length of the second metatarsal, because like you know, that is, they cross it and the angle 90 degrees. How we do this planing? We design the line, shopper joint line AB, like this. In amount of this line is one. After that, we design the uh, second metatarsal line, and we uh, we divide the, the sector AB in, in two two parts. And in the, the middle there is a point C, and we design the line of second metatarsal. And like I said before, 90 degrees uh, they cross in there. In the, the point the line AB uh, have a amount one. And how we calculate it? We see this is pathological foot. This is uh, a abduction deformity of the forefoot. What we start, we start designing sector IB. We found point C in the middle. After that, we design the metatarsal uh, line. Origin, uh, how to say it? It's a normal line of the second metatarsal because it's crossed 90 degrees. We design it. After that, we design the pathological axis of the second metatarsal. They cross it in the level of the navicular bone here. And we do this correction. The, now the pathological axis, it axis uh, ideal axis of the second metatarsal is overlapping. And after that, we calculate the coefficient 2.43. It is the uh, amount of this sector, CD, bigger than the sector AB in the 2.43. What we do, we do correction of the axis and the lengthening in this will be in the normal position of the foot after the correction. How we do the correction? I, we designed the frame. It should be used for the correction. This is uh, osteotomy of cuboid in uh, cuneiform. Uh, another uh, osteotomy is cuboid in navicular uh, osteotomy. The amount of length in it, you may calculate this formula because you remember the CD, the, the amount of length of the bone, should be only one millimeter, no more. But the destruction of the uh, of the destruction amount of the sector AB in the medial road of the foot, it should be minimum one millimeter 25. Clinical exams, this lady of the post of the polio, look to see adduction deformity of the forefoot, equinus deformity of the calcaneus. This is a combination of two osteotomy, calcaneus osteotomy and the midfoot. And the midfoot, it was done osteotomy of the cuboid because it is an ankylosis. 
And at the level of the navicular cuneiform bone, we did the uh, arthrodesis, a little bit of compression in the beginning. During treatment, correction of the declinus or position of the calcaneus. And uh, simultaneously, there was done correction of the flexion deformity of the knee. This is how the frame looks during treatment. And this is uh, how the correction was done. This is post-operative X-ray. And uh, during correction, you see destruction of the level of the arthrodesis. And this is at the end of the correction. After removing the frame, this corresponded to our preparation plan. And the same uh, before and after uh, in the lateral view. And this is clinical view of the patient after the treatment. And this is before and after in the frontal view. Cavus foot is more complicated treatment. And we, like I said, we have a situation with anterior cavus, mixed cavus, or a cavus with equinus. In the lateral uh, programming, we uh, always do reference of the normal angles of the foot in lateral view. We should remember the inclining of the principal ankle angles of the axis of the foot. The ankle or angles or angle between the calcaneus and the forefoot in 130 degrees, inclination of the forefoot with the horizontal plane 22 degrees, inclination of calcaneus 28 degrees, and inclination of the talus in 24 degrees. This is again designed to schematically inclination of the talus and the forefoot line. Like you see, this inclination and negative because the talus uh, axis is inclined more than the forefoot, but in the cavus deformity, completely different. Which kind of uh, osteotomy we use? If the deformity the, uh, may be in the uh, level of the <clears throat> shopper joint, Deforming it may be in the level of the midfoot at the navicular cuboin or in the level of the lystrum. Which kind of osteotomy we use? We use talocalcaneal osteotomy in more proximal, navicular cuboid osteotomy or cuboid cuneiform osteotomy. And this is how it looks. We put the hinges or virtual hinges at the level of the uh, dorsal part of osteotomy. We do progressive correction. Another osteotomy is osteotomy cuboid navicular. And the third time of osteotomy is cuboid cuneiform osteotomy. And if you need to do lengthening, the hinge may be positioned more uh, distant from osteotomy, or more dorsal. And this way we achieve the lengthening and the correction of deformity. How we do planing of this? We use the mechanical lateral midfoot angle. You see the uh, joint line AB, the same like the previous we studied for calcaneus. We studied this angle between the joint line and the mechanical axis of the first metatarsals. This angle is 23.6 degrees. The point C is the distal part of the metatarsal. And uh, if you take a uh, sector AB with amount one, like the previous one, the coefficient between these two sectors, IB and a AC, it is 4.3. How we do the planing here? This is deformity of the midfoot, like a anterior cavus or equinus of the forefoot. We design the two points A and B. We design the line, it is a normal line, in the angle between these two lines, 23 degrees, like I said before. After that, we designed the pathological axis of the first metatarsal. You see here, deformity, we found that is the level of the talus. This is the apex of deformity. We need to do this kind of correction and we need to do lengthening. For calculation of the lengthening, we take the sector AB, that is one, and coefficient of uh, AC to RB is 4.3. We do this calculation. We need to know now how amount of lengthening we should do. We do correction and progressive lengthening. We achieve the normal amount of the foot. Some clinical examples. This is a young boy. He have a post-traumatic deformity, anterior cavus, which was it was a fracture and the healing malunion on the level cuneiform bones. We do osteotomy of these lines and. Uh, 
this is uh, during the, uh, osteotomy. We put the olefar inside of the osteotomy to guarantee the destruction of the osteotomy to prevent premature consolidation during correction with lengthening of the forefoot. This is again lateral view. And this is at the end of the extraction with a good regenerate. And this is after removing the frame. Clinical view, you see correction of the deformity and lengthening of the foot. And this is one year follow up. And um, frequently we need to do combination of calcaneus in the midfoot osteotomy. In the same way, you should do the plane of one and another. This is a frame with the use of this combination of two <laughs> orthotomy, calcaneus at the midfoot. And I show you some clinical examples. This is cavus deformity and shortening of the foot. This is proprioceptive view. We realize that the deformity is the level of the navicular bone. And like I said before, you see the crossing lines of the talus and the uh, forefoot is now is positive. You see, normal is like this, but uh, now the uh, blue line, the gray line, they incline it completely differently because of the deformity of the forefoot. There is a deformity of uh, calcaneus varus in abduction, and the front uh, from the bottom. This is difference before right and left foot, lateral view. We do here osteotomy of calcaneus and osteotomy of cuboid and the navicular. We put inside olive wires to prevent consolidation. This is in the beginning. And this is uh, during treatment with the frame. At the end of the correction, lateral view. And this is plantar view in the beginning and the end of the correction. Radiological view after correction and the clinical view after correction with lengthening and the realignment of the foot. Good foot function of the... Uh, Ankle next, another clinical example, this is again cavus deformity in majority is deformity of the forefoot, shortening of the calcaneus. Again, much more deformed, but deformity now it's more distal. You see the inclination uh, of the talus line and the forefoot line. This is clinical view of the foot before treatment, plantar view. We do osteotomy of the calcaneus in the midfoot from two small incision, fixation of the talus, and we put the olive wire inside of osteotomy. This is how it looks the frame. We put two different hinges, one anterior hinge and one posterior hinge for the calcaneus. At the end of the surgery, fixation of the tooth. Again, we put the uh, uh, olive wires inside of osteotomy to prevent premature consolidation. And this is a frame in the beginning of a correction. And during treatment, the lady, and you see now amount of length on the midfoot. And this is a frame during treatment. The patient may walk with the special shoes. We put this soft shoes for premature bearing over the foot. At the end of the correction, and the clinical view. And this is the result of the treatment, the radiological view of the foot after the treatment. And this is how it looks at the end of the treatment of the right foot. V osteotomy. It is more useful osteotomy. It's combination of the calcaneus osteotomy and osteotomy anterior part of the calcaneus and the talus. We use it frequently. Another kind of osteotomy similar, but a little bit different. Why osteotomy with posterior calcaneus and anterior calcaneus and the talus osteotomy. Three rays osteotomy of the talus zone. This is how it looks on the bone. It may be done the same in two small incision. And the frame is how it looks. We need always fix it the talus in this original position because usually ankle joints rigid and we put this in a neutral position of the talus. Two osteotomy, a V and Y, they are similar, but you see there is a difference because when we do osteotomy V shape, we do two regenerated bone and lengthening with the y, V osteotomy is much bigger than the Y osteotomy. We do the study of these two osteotomies. So we published this job about these cases 
and this was 21 cases of 50, 51 cases with 55 feet. This is a table uh, between them, and I show you some clinical example of this osteotomy. Why osteotomy? It is a post-traumatic deformity. In this case, we don't need to do lengthening. We know we need, should do only correction of the deformity. This is why osteotomy, how this looks during surgery. Fix it of the talus with half pin in one wire. In the beginning of the correction, this is of the end of the correction. And we achieve this amount of uh, regenerated bone and we do this correction and we achieve the plenty grade food. Another mm -hmm. clinical example demonstrate the use of we osteotomy, this girl with a deformity, it looks like a club foot, but when we see the radiologically how the foot looks, it is like a um, congenital triple artery disease. You see stenosis in the subtalar in the shopper joint. In this case, in this young girl, it is indicated osteotomy treated with osteotomy of the calcaneus, osteotomy of the midfoot, fixing the talus with the half pin, and the uh, lengthening of the tibia, we put the frame in the tibia with osteotomy of tibia and fibula for lengthening. This is a during treatment, the lengthening of the tibia, and uh, how the look, it looks during treatment with the frame. And this is a uh, radiological view after we finish the treatment, the big amount of lengthening of the foot and correction of the deformity. This is clinical view of the foot after the treatment before and after and before and after in uh, one last case i will show you possibility of so we osteotomy this is um, congenital tibial hemimelia mm -hmm. the patient was treated before it, uh, it was like this when he was born he this a collection of his prosthesis he used all his life and this is how it looks when the patient comes in our observation with the equinus deformity, a big amount of shortening. And you see this is synostosis between fibula and tibia. It was done when he was young in arthroditis of the ankle joint, but deformity in equinus was too big. So he couldn't use normal shoes, only the prosthesis. And we decided to do a osteotomy of the calcaneus, of the calcaneus in the midfoot. Here all it was one unique piece of bone. Progressive lengthening of the tibia at the same time. This is a frame in the 10 days of distraction. And the progressive distraction, the correction of the foot deformity, big amount of lengthening of the level of the foot and the, and the proximal tibia, the frame during treatment, and more and more we do correction. This is the frame at the end of the correction procedure and lengthening, a long amount of lengthening of the tibia during treatment. And uh, this is uh, the result of the lengthening, the correction of the foot. It was really good result. Patient really was satis satisfied. And he used this brace, hey. uh, really good. And uh, this is video, if you may see it. But uh, the patient asked me again if it is possible to do more lengthening to achieve a normal foot. And we decided to do it after three years plus minus, we do another sur surgery. We do only lengthening of the tibia. We protect the foot, we keep the frame, but without osteotomy, only to maintain the position of the foot. A regenerative bone was not so good. And we, at the end, we decide to pull the plate to maintain the medial part of the tibia lengthening. And this is clinical view. Like you see now, it's completely normal foot. And we achieve complete uh, equalization of the length. And uh, this is result of the one year with a good function. And we um, studied this uh, two kinds of osteotomy, V and Y, with this patient. It was 25 patient Y osteotomy, 30 with V osteotomy. And like you see here in this table, that the amount of lengthening was much bigger in the V osteotomy than in the Y osteotomy. In destruction time, it was much less than uh, in Y osteotomy and then the V osteotomy because Y osteotomy it's only corrective osteotomy. In complex foot deformity, two or uh, both of osteotomy have uh, the same uh, valid technique, but the Y osteotomy uh, not 
per me lengthening, but you know the osteotomy we may achieve lengthening about 27 percent of the initial length thank you very much for your attention thank you professor thank for you. such a nice presentation and now i invite our esteemed members for any questions they have on this topic before uh, going on there's a question from professor herode how to remove olive wires that are inside the osteotomy and completion of treatment ah uh, it's not difficult because the uh, olive wire we i cut it not exactly at the level all olive i leave maybe Two three millimeters of the to the near of osteotomy, and I do cut obliquely. It's quite like uh, forty five degrees oblique. And for removing this, practically I uh, release the, the free part of the olive, and I do it retrogradely. Like I, I push it, and the the olive uh, with this small tip, with a small cut it uh, piece of of wire, the and touch the skin. I do small cut with a small incision, and olive oil goes outside. It's not anti-grade, but retrograde removing of these wires. All of them, it's always possible removed. It's not so difficult. It's important the patient should have a good anesthesia. Usually, I always remove the frames in a, a small anesthesia, a general anesthesia, short anesthesia, like sedation. Uh, <clears throat> Jayan Sharma, can I can I pass comment and one question? Definitely. Hello? Yes. yes. Uh, Alexander yes. Kirienko. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you really yeah. good. So fantastic lecture. And uh, re regarding the meat food and cavus, hind food, you told everything nicely. My one question to the regarding the Pass plan of algas. Yeah. Pass plan of algas. When you go for lengthening of the calcaneum, lengthening for pass plan of algas, yeah. flat foot, lengthening of the calcaneum is uh, enough for that, only for plain mm, foot. The, the, yeah, the treatment of pass uh, um, valgus and um, a plain, a plain planus valgus, it's not the same, obviously, because the, the etiology of this pathology is uh, much more different. Usually, it is a deformity with an unstable foot or some uh, lack of, of uh, the ligaments. And uh, usually, this uh, only osteotomy, I think it's not sufficient. It is uh, more important, probably, to stabilize a subtalar joint. And this kind of pathology, we do subtalar arthrodesis for the adults and uh, uh, we do the, the progressive correction for, for the children but the, the correction should be done with stabilization for this reason probably this patient I don't have so many patients with uh, foot planus treated with the lizarum because usually they treat it with calcaneus stop surgery only the screws on subtalar joint and this patient treated conservatively and we don't do so frequently surgery with the lizard frame of this pathology. Only for maybe for adult, when I do more serious surgery like subtalar arthrodesis or subtalar arthrodesis with correction or combination subtalar arthrodesis and calcaneus osteotomy together. Thank you. Uh, There's a question the by uh, Dr. Aradna regarding compartment syndrome with V and Y osteotomy. Oh, uh, you know, I, yes, we really um, analyze all these patients in our cases, and uh, we don't have any uh, in, any case for uh, the compartment syndrome of the foot. Obviously, the, the patient have a swelling, or uh, some patient uh, have a pain during surgery, but we don't see a really one uh, compartment syndrome with swelling or necrosis, uh, deep necrosis of the soft tissue of the bone. I never see the necrosis of the talus after osteotomy because we usually do the, the surgery from the small incision. I don't do 
big uh, surgery, only small incision, only to put in osteotome. If it's the like, fluoroscopic control, I do osteotomy. And um, I practically I don't have this kind of complication. I have a complication with the tension of the wires or of the um, superficial skin necrosis. Sometimes they cut the skin because it's near space and the, too many wires, and this is a problem. But the compartment syndrome, I I don't I don't have I don't cross this problem. Shamsul, yeah. you want to ask something? Unmute first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Thanks, Professor, for a wonderful lecture. It was a real good learning, sir. I just have a small question in complex foot deformities. In comparison of uh, V osteotomy versus mid tarsal osteotomy, what do you feel is gives a good clinical outcome in deformity correction, lengthening, and as well as uh, uh, spinning the joints? So, no, versus, the, yeah, yeah. If I understand you, the, the difference of the V osteotomy in the osteotomy mid foot yes, in sir. this. Because if you do V osteotomy, usually the indication is when there is a really rigid foot, like a complex deformity, a quina cover varus foot with a rigid subtalar joint and a rigid shopper joint. In this case, you may do V osteotomy and you do progressive correction, but you know that the foot is just rigid. You don't have a really elastic foot. When I do osteotomy of the midfoot of the cuboid and navicular or cuboid and cuneiform um, bone, I uh, my my amount of uh, my aim of the treatment to preserve subtalar joint and the shopper joint because if you do only calcaneus, you don't you don't touch the joint. If you do um, uh, osteotomy of navicular bone and the cuneiform or uh, ecubo, ecuboid, you don't touch the shopper joint. In this way, mobility of uh, the shopper joint may be preserved. If you do osteotomy of the an, uh, anterior part of the talus and the calcaneus, like you, we do with the V osteotomy, usually shopper joint became, became much more rigid than before. Like we have in this old uh, segment, if you do all internal of the femur, the knee joint became rigid. If you do lengthening of the tibia, ankle joint may become rigid. Or this, and the same principle here. More you're uh, distanced from the joint, better is for the for this for preservation of the mobility. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One question from my side, uh, Alexander, sir. Uh, regarding tarsal coalitions, uh, calcaneo, telocalcaneal bars, do you prefer doing osteotomy, V or Y, with Elizero frame? Uh, with co coalition, yeah, yeah, yeah with, uh, yes. If there is a the congenital coalition, it's like we know that experience uh, uh, no, no, teach us that it's not possible to re uh, release this uh, coalition because there is always risk of uh, synostosis again. And uh, we do usually treatment uh, with osteotomy. I do osteotomy or the level of coalition or a little more distal, but uh, with, uh, correction with a little bit of translation. But usually it's impossible to um, to eliminate the coalition and reprint the, the, the movement of the subtalar joint. So, sir, what do you think about the best planners in the age of 13 to 14 years? What is the best treatment? Best uh, planners? Yeah, uh, pl planus foot, I think, he, uh, because I, I know that I don't have too much experience, but my colleague have a big experience of using the calcaneus stop, we call it. It is uh, like a artro -rizi, we call it artro -rizi or calcaneus stop in a uh, Italian language, because many doctors use this uh, screw, they put it in the calcaneus at the level of the subtalar joint, in the way this uh, this screw prevent the pathological movement of the subtalar joint, if you may correct really mm, big deformity of the plus uh, plus planus. This is a good advantage of this treatment because it's uh, conserved the mobility of the foot. It's really small surgery. If the surgery is not uh, efficient, uh, like I said before, uh, maybe uh, later when the patient became adult. It may be done with uh, arthrodesis or Elizaro frame, but in the young age before uh, 14 and quite, uh, usually they do the 
10, 12 years, but it's possible to do 15 years too. It is a good result, the same of this treatment. Thank you very much. Okay, the last question from Dr. Prashant. Uh, sir, during the equinus correction, uh, do you do anything for the so for the tendo eclipse? For what, sorry? Uh, for the equinus correction, you yeah. do anything for the so for the tendo eclipse? Tendon Achilles. Yes, if there is a really rigid deformity and uh, there is a big tension of the Achilles tendon, I do lengthen the Achilles tendon, but it is a mini invasive technique. It's like a zip technique. I do three small cuts of the. If there is a varus deformity, I do first cut medial, distal, after that one more, and a third cut. And uh, I do. Um, just a little bit of correction immediately in the surgery. And this way that the, the tendon slipping in the, these cups of the tendon slipping and the uh, sliding, sorry. And um, uh, I do progressive correction again with the frame. Uh, I don't do too much uh, destruction of the tendon because sometimes it is a risk of the uh, disattachment, complete disattachment. You should pay attention, don't do too much length of Achilles tendon in one, one time immediately. But we do all, always this treatment when there is a tendon good uh, conserved. So uh, frequently we find the tendon that just was operated many times and there is only scars and it's not impossible to do lengthening of the scars. If there is a tendon, I do uh, lengthen of the tendon. If there is no tendon, it's just too much um, scars there. I don't do maybe nothing. I do only progressive correction with the frame. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Shamshul. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks, everybody, for a wonderful session. Thank you. Yeah. Next. Uh... <laughs> Uh, our next esteemed faculty, faculty is uh, Professor Jayal Sama. He is our uh, Vice President, Assam India. He has done MS, DNB, MNA, MS, uh, now Professor Index Medical College in the Lord. He is a Kassan Orthopedics and is Vice President, Assam India. He is Editor in Chief of Indian Journal of Orthopedics, IGOS. More than 18 publications and journals he has done. Three books he has written. He has authored three books. Number one, Examination Secrets. Number two, essential guide for practical orthopedics. And number three, basic principle of Elizabeth surgery, second edition. He has uh, more than 30 podium presentations as faculty and has done MS, TNB, and FNB examination since last 14 years. He's a gold medalist in MS, PG, state paper, presentation, and free paper. And today is going to talk on the uh, role of just uh, and neglected resistant CTV, stepwise correction. Over to you, Jan, sir. Thank you, Shamshul. I'll share my screen. Yeah. Please go for the screen, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'll be talking on a topic uh, which is very uh, favorite of mine because. Uh, neglected resistant club foot and treatment with jazz fixator was what was taught to me during my postgraduate. The picture on the left side is of Dr. B.B. Joshi who devised this Joshi's external stabilizing system which also works on distraction histiogenesis. The goal of treatment of club foot deformities is to obtain a full and lasting correction. The patient should have a functional pain-free and plantigrade foot the principal use in jazz fixator is same as that was uh, that is advocated by Elizero uh, ring fixation system. The physiological tension and stress applied to the tissue stimulates histiogenesis, controlled differential distraction. The importance over here is a controlled differential distraction, which is different from the routine differential distraction, corrects the deformity and realigns the bones. The component deformity of the deformity in the club foot are in the leg, the hind foot and the forefoot. 
and ctv correction involves correction of these three blocks the blocks of leg hind foot and forefoot usually distraction corrects only one axis whereas differential distraction can correct three dimensional deformities jess helps in maintaining both medial and lateral columns in a differentiated manner it prevents crushing of the articular surface it eliminates pre existing contractures of the soft tissue and realigns the joint to establish the plantigrade foot so the schematic representation of how this is uh, done is jess fixator application then distraction phase then uh, for one week do manual repositioning complete the correction remain in the holding phase for 3 weeks the instrumentation used are the distractors like this the connecting rods the allen keys have to be there the clamps z bars and l bars and k wires their use would be detailed in the next slides so the first wire that is to be passed is a metatarsal k wire it is a first one is a transfixing cray wire passed through the neck of first and fifth only first and fifth metatarsal from lateral to medial side then you add two additional parallel wires one going from first to third and second from fifth to third the distance between the metatarsal wire is kept 2 to 3 mm more than the distractors distance now we place calcaneum wires first two parallel wires are passed through the tuber of calcaneum and then one additional half pin is passed from the posterior aspect of calcaneum along the long axis then we use two l rods to connect these calcaneal wires like you see uh, over here this is a l wire which is connecting that parallel wires with the transfer i mean uh, long axis wire and similarly l wire l wires are attached over here in the metatarsal areas for fixing of the distractors the calcaneo metatarsal distractors are then attached to the k wire on each side then you pass posterior transverse rod out, no, attached to the posterior calcaneo half in and to the posterior l of the you know, l rods these are used for putting a foot plate for preventing the contractures of the toes now the tbl wires are placed two wires one finger breadth apart wires are passed from lateral to medial side wires are kept 2 to 4 cm apart and depending upon the length of the middle segment z rods are applied sometimes you can add one more extra wire in the uh, tibia if the bone is of very good quality then creation of holds and connection between the holds two z rods are attached wires are pre stressed two transverse rods are again attached over here from anterior to posterior side the tibio calcaneal distractors these ones are applied on each side corresponding to the transverse rods all four distractors are now distracted till you feel resistance the transverse anterior rod the significance comes over here from here you attach the tibio metatarsal connecting rods these provide tension force and keep the anterior portion of the joint open and they provide better gliding of the talus when you are correcting the equinus so distraction is started on the third day calcaneo metatarsal and tibio calcaneal distractors at a rate of 0.25 mm every 6 hours and laterally it is 0.25 mm every 12 hours so it is a differential distraction where medial is distracted more as compared to the lateral side the tibio calcaneal distraction is carried out in two position initially the distractors are mounted between the inferior limb of the z rod and l rods of the calcaneum the distractor lie parallel to the leg this corrects the varus and the hind foot equinus once this has been achieved the position of this distractor is changed and manual repositioning is done that means you remove the distractor from the tibia and uh, calcaneum try to do do maximum manual repositioning 
reapply the distractors and continue this protocol for one more uh, week. This process is continued till overcorrection. The distraction advantage of this procedure is that the distraction can be reversed. Distraction is continued until the complete correction is achieved. These are the methods of preventing the contractures of the toes. The holding phase is for 6 to 8 weeks after completion of the distraction. After which we give braces. These are for the uh, night uh, time uh, wearing and this one is for the day walking uh, time uh, bracing. These are few examples. A child long back then uh, with just distractor. The correction achieved. This is another boy, Aditya. One side it was uh, posterior medial soft tissue release done. The other side was a just distractor applied. The one with distractor is showing better result as compared to the other side. This is another child. I don't have the pre-operative picture of her. This correction and this is just yesterday's video that has been shared with us. Though there is some metatarsus adductus in this, but her foot is plenty great. Another patient, this is quite an older child, around 11 years. And the correction that could be achieved was quite satisfactory. This is what we could achieve in this patient. Another patient, again there is quite a good correction with almost centralized long axis of the tibia. The complications were few, mainly of flexion or clawing of the toes seen during the distraction phase. The advantages of JESS was that it is semi-invasive, allows simultaneous correction of all deformities, three-dimensional control is there, foot achieved is in, of longer length as compared to doing osteotomy and fixations, excessive cartilage compression and chondrolysis is avoided, it has direct purchase over distorted bony anatomy, hence better correction of alignment and remodeling could be achieved. It adds to tissue by distraction histogenesis and allows for scope of revision and rethinking. I thank you for your patient listening. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for our wonderful lecture, sir. On just this is a very important in the early ages. And now we have invite. Uh, our faculties for the question, sir. Just one disclaimer. Nowadays, uh, because of Ponsetti, the chance of application of JESS has reduced uh, to a greater extent and only for syndromic and very resistant feet that we are going to, uh, we are applying this and that too in an age group of less than 12 to 14 years. Beyond which definitely Elizro has a better role to play. Any questions for the panel, please? No, Raful no has question. asked one question. No. No, there's one <laughs> question from Praful. Maximum age I've done is 14 years and youngest was of uh, six years time. Uh, can I ask one question, Jayan Sharma? Very good yes, lecture. Yes. Uh, regarding the AMC cages. The most of the AMC cases, foots, foots are very much rigid in comparison yes, to simple club foot. Uh, do you have any experience with case fixator with the AMC cases? No, sir. I have done one AMC, but that was for knee contracture. We did it with Elizro, okay, not okay. Uh, for the foot. And one disadvantage that you mentioned, whenever we are doing uh, this correction of this kind of pathology, CTV, uh, always while we are doing Elizarov, we are putting the pins. There is one, one mm where the uh, phalanges and the tarsals, in the metatarsals. Yes, to prevent sir. the clawing that you mentioned. This is one of the disadvantages of this. Just fix it. Otherwise, everything is okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Sir, how? 
how early do you recommend say seven or eight times pop has it corrected yeah how uh, younger uh, uh, early you can, it can be applied or you recommendation so i have done one patient uh, of uh, six years before that i have not done it again uh, before going for just fixator i have definitely given a chance of uh, reponsity application but uh, of uh, not much help so then instead of going for pmc str i tried uh, going for a jest and the girl's video that I, you you are seeing is of that uh, child itself she is now 9 years of age so it's 3 years uh, after the correction so you are also doing a vera sir you also do lot of jest in ctv your opinion about this procedure Okay, Samshul. Next, yes, sir. Even sir, I am doing a lot of just. I am getting very good results in young age, sir. Young sir, less than five years. They are giving wonderful results, sir. Yes. Sir, please unmute, sir. Please unmute, sir. There is a thesis going on in Jaipur Pondicherry on just in uh, resistant and neglected CT. I thought it has become obsolete procedure, but no, right. people are still doing it. Yes, sir. In more than five years, I'm doing laser, and less than five, I'm doing just uh, young children, sir. Not a neglected one, sir. Yeah. So, sir, uh, shall we move to the next part, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So, I think so. I'll meanwhile I'll uh, try contacting Saurabh. He was in an emergency surgery. Uh, that was what message I got. I'll just uh, catch okay. up with him. So, next we have uh, Dr. Prashant Upadhyay. we have his case discussion is from mp so now i request dr prashant they have to present his case yeah good evening everyone i will be sharing my screen now So should I start my case? Yeah, please do. <clears throat> okay. So a small history that I'll be giving about my case is that this was a young girl around twenty four, twenty five year old age. She met with an accident, an RTA. After that, multiple operations were done. Some vascular surgery was done. Then uh, flap was done, which was rejected. Then skin grafting. The ankle at the tibio talar joint was subluxating so the surgeon applied k wires to stabilize it after removal of the k wire this was what the ankle looked like it was into equinus uh, into varus the heel was in varus and there was only a jog of movement that was present at the at the ankle joint so it was more of a fibrous ankylosis and this is how the foot looked like there was only a sort of a skin which was there on the bone the ankle was in equinus almost 180 degree of equinus the fore foot was pronated compared to the hind foot and there was a hind foot varus so the deformities that have to be taken care was a hind foot varus fore foot pronation compared to hind foot and ankle equinus along with that the skin condition was very bad it was only the skin which was just adhered to the bone so while doing this case i was very much uh, afraid that should i give a incision or not should i use a sham spin should i use a olive wire so treating this particular case as a more of a neglected ct we more of a contracture i applied elizaro with uh, two rings in the leg and uh, 
connecting the leg ring with the hind foot ring and the hind foot ring along with the foot ring so there were total of four hinges that was used there was a medial and lateral for the correction of the varus then there were two hinges for the correction of the cavus and this is how it looked like from uh, the end the four foot was pronated the fingers were contracted as we started correcting the cavus the first point was to bring the heel in line with the tibia so this is what we were able to achieve the heel came in the line with the tibia now what we can see is that the four foot now properly we can see that the four foot is pronated as compared to the hind foot now the second thing what has to be taken care of was the correction of the equinus at this point the equinus has to be corrected uh with the motor unit that pushes oh, the hind foot before. ring in a way that it makes an arch which we don't have to push the ring because if we are pushing the ring then it will distract the ankle joint to correct the equinus we have to push it downwards in a way that it makes an arc and the ankle makes an arc and it comes up so there is a motor unit which is applied in the line of the leg if we see on the right side there is a motor unit in the line of the leg which is also seen on the left side so that motor unit it is pushing the hind foot ring and also one rod which is connected on the foot ring which is which is pulling it so there are two forces that has been applied here and also the hinge has to be something that when we are correcting over here the cavus deformity after that the same hinge is used for the correction of the equinus so now one rod which is pulling the four foot ring and the other which is pushing the hind foot ring with time this is what i was able to achieve the fingers were going into cloying the so that has to, to be corrected posterior capsulotomy was done uh, the tendons were released now at this stage after correcting after almost getting the foot in a dorsiflex position the second thing that has to be uh, taken care of was the correction of the uh, four foot pronation as compared to the hind foot so for that the two rods were connected that were using as a as a twisting way so the four foot was brought into neutral so this is what i i, I was able to achieve at this position the fixator was removed this was somewhere in the middle of the operation and this is after removal of the fixator this is few months after the foot looks almost identical normal and also the patient is able to uh, wear the footwear now she is able to walk on it the foot looks almost similar to the other one this is the x ray in the end so from the left side which is the ap x ray the foot which was in uh, varus in cavus the ap that i was able to achieve it's almost the axis which we can see is almost straight in ap in lateral if we see now it is almost almost corrected the ankle has gone into bony fibrosis uh bony ankylosis sorry this is clinically clinically on the left side ap got almost normal lateral also we can see even the skin condition has uh, been better over the period of time the knee joint is good she can uh, Sit cross leg, do squatting, can walk now. So what I always write in the end is that we have seen a lot of cases. Every case teach everything new. This case has also taught me something new. But still, there are uh, space for me to learn even more. So I always say that learning is not a destination; it is a continuous process. Thank you. comments from professor prinico
Oh, no, the, the compliments. The case is really complicated, really, really difficult. Difficult. Now, I want to ask you, but uh, why? Because I usually I prefer to fix the tooth in the first surgery. Why you prefer don't fix the tooth with the Kirchner wire and just in the beginning? Because in any case, during correction, uh, the tooth goes in the flexion and it became difficult uh, to to correct it to reduce them. And sometimes it says there is a risk of dislocation of subluxation. What do you think about this? Yes, this is something that I have learned from this case that I should have fixed the toes because the third and the fourth toe, they have gone into subluxation. Mm -hmm. okay. Barisha, Barisha, you, you need to unmute, microphone. unmute you. Barisha, you need to unmute yes, yourself. Uh, in, in every case, see, put deformities. In every case, most of the cases, I always put the, depending on the age of the patient, one or 1.5 kvers. One kvers, all the fingers. If you go for distraction for the backside, you are making cloying. To prevent that, it is very easy. Initially, if you could do that, and you could, kvers correction, you could put a bar, then you will get a very good kvers correction. Bar from the middle side and putting the wires in the toes. Otherwise, uh, your case is very good. And you could show the movement of the ankle joint. And uh, you have done good job, but only the uh, putting the... Uh, the toe wires. Toes. Yes, wires. It gives very fantastic results, prevent all the time. It is always uh, better to do that in these case, deformity cases. Yes. The quite and see quite okay us always. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Jan, sir, may I ask one question? Uh, Krenko, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, Krenko, sir, and Baris, sir, uh, regarding in comparison with the uh, periodic and adult case of uh, club food, we have been using JS uh, in less than five years and Elizabeth more than five years. What is your experience? What is your experience? You are doing religion in all the cases in two years or three years also? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, Kirian, go talk first or I'll talk first. Uh, I just say, sir. Uh, sorry, I I'm don't sorry. understand. Uh, no, usually I, I uh, do surgery for the children starting from five years plus minus because in the, before this age, uh, two questions because if before they usually treat it with a concentimated plaster cast or some uh, medial release with open surgery and another thing is that um, the much easier I think to to do the treatment the, the children of the age of five years because they contacted you may they don't cry always small children uh, it's not uh, it's much more difficult. Sometimes I, I do few cases, really small children, uh, one year, 10 months, in one in another one or two years. It's these children easy, much easier to treat than the children in four years because they're too small, they listen to what the mother said, and they, they, there is no problem. They don't uh, don't realize again what's happened. They adapted to the situation. And maybe sometimes it's better to do it early age or after five years of, uh, of life, I think. Now, now I would like to answer the question from my side. Hmm. Soft tissue, what I taught, soft tissue lengthening is a combination of a stretch and regeneration. That's why whenever I see that the patient has, has taken treatment before, they have done the Ponsidi treatment, but not yet corrected. You have a varus and tight tendochilis, and you have adductus. Even then, I don't hesitate to go for Elizaro surgery, two, three, four, or five. Two, three, four, or five. You mm -hmm. believe it or not, I have done even one year. So rigid with, with AMC. I go for one, two, three, four, five. I don't hesitate to uh, uh, apply desirable apparatus for these patients. 
because it is very easy to correct that you told very easy to correct and you have a very fantastic result when you go for before five even then three four five i don't hesitate i do the elizar surgery six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen even you don't need to go for any kind of osteotomy if you apply elizar I remember all of this. No, no, South it's okay. I agree with you. A There's a question of a little bit of culture and the uh, orthopedic attitude. Yeah. Yes. We Agrawal, have Arya Agrawal, sir, who has a book on sir. CTV. We'll ask his uh, comments. Please unmute, sir. Agrawal, sir, please unmute. Sir, please unmute, sir. Agrawal, sir. Okay. Actually, in the clubfoot, basically the principle is uh, in the last, after 14, 15 years to do the osteotomy or in the case of the neurogenic foot, we have to do the osteotomy. Otherwise, the recurrence is very common. And before that, we do plantar fasciotomy, VYplasty. We never open the tendo at least. And by that, gradually we correct the deformity and we want to break the curve, at least 30 to 40 degree of the abduction. So after 14, 15, when they, after maturity, we need osteotomy. Otherwise, we do not do any osteotomy. Except with the neurogenic foot, we have to do the osteotomy. Agarwal, sir, do you prefer doing Elizor and younger children also, four or five years? Because below yeah, five years... Sometimes, sometimes the deformity is very severe. Yeah. So... Even we, we are doing in the, at the age of two years. Otherwise, before three years, we should not do the Elizera, but sometimes we need it. Even in the Kurgan, I found they are doing the two years child. So we need that when the deformity is not corrected by the plaster, we have to apply the Elizera. Jen, sir, your opinion about in, in this age, Jess versus Elizera, in pretty cases, sir, below five. Like, uh... I usually get patients from the rural background and teaching them Elizarov uh, distraction was comparatively difficult as compared to teaching them how to uh, use a just distractor. They don't have to use a spanner and all and uh, which has to be distracted how much. So for that reason for rural patients I definitely prefer going for uh, just fixator and if they have really undergone two to three cycles of Ponseti without any kind of uh, good results. Then only I go for Elizero. I mean, sorry, Jess. For older children beyond 12, I'll definitely go for a Elizero fixator. Uh, Dr. Jain, actually, in some cases of the camps, we have applied the Jess fixator. And yes, after sir. that, we found that all were recurrent because in the Jess fixator, you make the foot into neutral position. It's very difficult to make them 30 to 40 degree of the abduction. So ultimately, when we have the 20, 30 cases of the Jess, then we found that every case has got the recurrence. So now we are not doing the Jess because we cannot produce the 30 to 40 degree of the abduction. Second thing, Jess, you do not do the VY plus T at end of the no. So that deformating force exists. And we have studied that in all the just cases, we got the decrease of the deformity. So now we have left the chicken and we are doing only illegal. Tamsul, your yes, experience? I'm here, sir. My sir. So you're asking me, sir. Yeah, yeah, your experience. Do you find recurrence sir. in your cases? Because sir, nowadays, sir, uh, there will change. Once yes, you've sir. got the neutral, you remove all the distractors, do over correction, and then apply a distractor, do seven days of further distraction in abducted position. That is the advantage of the newer uh, assembly that we are getting from UMAX. Right, sir. Right, sir. I really agree with you because in younger children, less than five, I've been doing uh, just regularly and the results are fantastic. There is no recurrence as such. Above five, I've been applying uh, Elizero. Amir, sir, your opinion, sir. Yes, uh, I have done even less than, uh, say, after one year, say, six to seven times plaster. If the foot is not corrected, I don't put or hesitate to put the jess. Okay, that makes life easier because the parents 
cannot go on say i even 14 15 times i have seen the some patients are put on plaster but after five ta five times i never go for the, the plaster so uh, that's number one number two uh, the jays for the jays uh, i have good uh, no recurrence i have uh, rather whatever correction i see that is very much supplement what dr sharma said told after the removal of this you will see the surprise in it that what the correction you have got in the frame that is much more supple and you can correct it in the better position and put a plaster very nicely. So that gives a good result. Third thing, just one thing modification I do, I do not lock the, th the calcaneum with the wire from the posterior aspect. With the um, Matthew Varghese teaching that calcaneum needs to rotate. So if I uh, fix it you know, with the third wire, the from the posture aspect that will hinder. So I keep it loose and then only during correction of the equinus, I uh, tighten it. Okay, sir. These are my minor modification by I have to study. Okay, sir. Yeah, sir. I tell you in the jazz everywhere, it is told you have to fix the calcaneus and do the deformity. It is not following the positive principles. Right, so sir. we have recorded that if in some cases, we have fixed the quantity, so there was a recurrence. So, first he says, we put the olive oil in the talus, and after that, even sometime I am trying to put that into the jess, because by jess, is without calcaneous fixation, you cannot do the jess fixation. So, we are now not preparing that, because it's a quantity principle, as soon as you do the abduction, the talus of calcaneus is moving from the internal rotation to external rotation and from verus to valgus. Two motion takes place at the calcaneus. External rotation and the from inversion to eversion. So, I don't know how you do it, but I am not successful with this. Just sir, one thing to supplement. Sir, with the manual plaster, we may... Uh, uh, most of the part of the, uh, some part of the deformity and notice is corrected with the positive principle. So, the resistant part is taken care of the jess. That's, I think, that's why it works better. I tell you what is the principle of the jess. You do the destruction and the soft tissue becomes supple. Again, do the plaster and whatever. That is the principle. I like that. The principle is just you make the soft tissue supple. Right. After right. making the neutral position, you do the plaster in abduction. I will repeat and repeat. That is the yeah, That is what Amiya sir is saying, that you get a better uh, supple foot yeah. and then you can yeah. do manipulation yeah. with Ponsetti again. Yeah, yeah. Right, sir. Right. And it's surprisingly very supple and gets correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Prashant, how difficult have you uh, finding handling such uh, bad trauma cases, the skin conditions? The skin condition is very bad. But I was extremely hesitant to put even an olive wire in, in that case because she has already undergone multiple surgeries with uh, even uh, even a flap with a with a cross leg flap also uh, even with a skin uh, graft a split skin grafting was also done so uh, even an olive wire I am not applied in that that particular case exactly that's the main difficulty the same course question I redirect to the panel. That uh, how do you find, uh, find uh, to handle this uh, difficult part, uh, this handling the skin condition in bad trauma where there's uh, almost no skin, sir? Kringo, sir, Bari, sir, uh, Agarwal, sir. About the bad skin condition that Dr. Prashant Bajaj uh, showed, we have been facing such cases. How do you handle the skin condition, sir? Very thin yeah. skin. And handle Elizaro is the handle. Yes, we have shown <laughs> Elizaro. Right. See. Angiogenesis, when he has done destruction, you are getting new vascularization. That soft tissue lengthening is a combination of a stretch and regeneration. This is the theory of Elizaro. Yes, nothing to do. I think uh, his case uh, shows that with the destruction, that uh, angiogenesis has done a wonderful thing. Just yes. one thing, Pratham. Oh, I would like to see that first we follow in the principle of CTV correction. First, uh, we have to put the uh, that uh, 
inverse and inverse and part. So rotation to be corrected for food, then you, uh, you could have done that. That's the, uh, could have been, might have been better, okay? Because otherwise you will uh, putting wrong, uh, stretching the wrong, in the wrong way, okay? But I got that four foot should be aligned with the iron foot, the rotation of the plane. Thereafter, you could, uh, could uh, that could have, uh, should have been done. That's the teaching by the Matthew Bhargis or uh, CTV, uh, Ponce Taylor, okay? So that I think uh, you consider the, could have been considered, okay, sir? Really the basic Thank principle you. is but that- it was done very nicely, okay. okay. Yes, sir, sorry. Basic principle is that, there is a head of the talus and navy cooler. Whenever you do the supination, so every plaster is done at the supination. What happens that head of the talus during supination, it comes into the ball and socket joint. And what happens when you do the navy cooler thus calcaneus, uh, cuboid, and it gives thus to the calcaneus. So every time we need the supination, that is because when you are doing the supination, it's a ball and socket zone. Head of the talus and navicular, they go into collinear. That is the basic thing, the correction of the club. Right, so, so do we have any more questions? Yes, Rather, I will just comment, Alexander, sir, you have shown us the courage to do some uh, correction of the food deformities with Ilija Rao. We, that will be motivating us. Okay. Thank you for your uh, wonderful presentation. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, we don't have any questions. So now I request our Vice President Jan, sir, to, to give up uh, closing remarks, sir. Yes. Uh, I thank everybody for uh, their active participation and special thanks to Professor Alexander Pinico who has taken time out from his busy schedule today to be with us. We had a real good discussion on real difficult topic of foot and ankle. Yes, as Amiya sir said, it has given us courage to uh, try our hand at foot and ankle deformities and uh, conditions with Elizrov also. I uh, thank you all for your active participation and I'll advise, uh, request Shamshul to uh, say Sorry, goodbye. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Professor Karinko, sir. Thanks, Bhagavad, sir, Adhawal, sir, Jain, sir, Prashant, Kansha, Pramar, for a wonderful uh, presentation. So, I'll be requesting everybody to join uh, next month, first Friday, for a webinar on uh, limb lending, where we have a, uh, Dr. Michael Asaya from Baltimore and Mangal, sir, for a good session. With this, I say goodbye to you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good night, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hello. Marashi, can you stop? Picture was done again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.